what is the industrial action that's happening? Well, the industrial action is largely about our pensions and the way in which a reform of our pensions is being pushed through without the consultation that's required and on a basis and with some financial models that basically are unsustainable and unsupportable. Many experts have now had a look at the figures and said basically this hasn't been done in a way that will allow us to have a decent retirement upon which we can live. Our pensions are being more than halved and the people who are coming into the profession are going to be very, very seriously affected. What's happening is we're trying to get them back around the table to take a look again at the basis upon which our, ben our pensions are being reformed and ask them to reconsider it because otherwise they're going to have a very, very disgruntled and unhappy workforce. It should be noted as well that a significant number of Vice-Chancellors have now agreed that there are significant problems with the modelling, with the methodology and that it requires a re-evaluation. So we're not alone here and in fact there is significant mood for change. So, Would you say that things are moving forward? Have there been talks? They're currently in talks at the moment with ACAS as well but what is most heartening I think is that a number of Vice-Chancellors have come out and agreed that we do need to look at it again and they are we think the tide is turning and we hope the tide is turning because we want to get back to work you know we do we don't want students to be hurt but we are having to do this because it is a serious financial issue it really is can i, can I just on, on that point reiterate and, and reinforce what's being said there we do not want to be here we want to be in the classroom teaching our students we do not want to take this action but we've got very few levers we can pull when the stakes are this high for us we're very sorry to do this but we really want the university leaders to think again. Well, we're, the, the thing that we're principally striking about is our pensions. We're based on a really false valuation. They've been pretty disingenuous about what the actual problem is. They're trying to greatly reduce our pensions. And that is why we're here manifesting today. But also, it's a good chance for everybody to look into the bigger issues facing universities in the UK, tuition fees, where the money's going, and how this is run ultimately. They've been largely positive and, and helpful towards your cause, or have you had some negative feedback in that um, obviously them, they're not able to attend their lectures? You know, it's an unfortunate situation, but I found that if I'm being honest with my students, they appreciate that immensely. And the level of support that we've gotten is phenomenal. So we've told them that we don't want them to suffer from all of this. We don't want this to go on any longer than it absolutely has to. And we're there for them in whatever way that we can. And they've really been appreciating that. So thank you so much to all the students who have had our back with this. And we want to get back to work as soon as we can. Good. So, um, how long would you say before you think you'll be able to be back to work? I know that's a difficult question, yeah. speculating as well, yeah. but um, would you say that you, you're positive about the future and that it will be close, or you're thinking it's going to be a while? I think we're getting increasingly positive every day. The, the really amazing thing this week has been seeing how the momentum has shifted. And the reaction to universities UK has been pretty negative. A lot of vice chancellors have come out in support of the strike. And I think now it's just a matter of time. So we've had such good support from the students. We've had such good support from other unions, from various vice speak to some students now about their view on the whole strike situation. Could you just let me know um, why you are here today? Well, I'm here today because what we want to happen is for the lecturers to be able to get back to work and feel comfortable in their workplace and feel like they've got a future. Until they get back to the workplace, the, the heart of the university is gone. We've got nothing without them in work and teaching. Um, and how has this affected you, the, the strike days? Obviously, you've probably not had lectures and seminars. Well, I am in a, an incredibly specialized program that involves a lot of lab work and one-on-one -on -one with our professors. So I haven't been able to work on my projects in depth the way I want to because I haven't been able to be supervised by my professors. And it really sucks, but you know, we're out here supporting them because they deserve to have a livable pension. And we will, I mean, I personally will take the sacrifice of not being able to complete my work if it means that we can support our professors. And do you think that what's been going on, these and their picket lines every day, is, is making a difference? Do you think that that's the, the appropriate way to go around it? Maybe you could answer? I think so. We're, we're getting some sort of change in rhetoric from, uh, from Colin, which is good. And I'm hoping that this protest today will get a more concrete answer out of when this is going to end and come to a solution, basically. Okay, thank you very much for your help. Is that all right? And on education as a whole, um, and not isolated. They are part of the Carlos concentrated war by the Tories on public services. We have same tax you are under, cut to marketisation, and we can have this on the NHS as they are on education. Your stories of unpaid overtime and intense pressure and overwhelming workloads are echoed by NHS workers. And the nursing student bursary has been taken away at a time of massive short staffing crisis in the NHS.
fod yma a dydy gwir a ran y Plaid Cymru. Dwi yma fel, fel cyn fyfyriwr Prif Ysgol Cyrdydd, fel, fel cyn aelod y staff Prif Ysgol Cyrdydd, fel aelod o gynllun pensiwn y USS. Ond dwi yma hefyd fel, fel Cymro a fel aelod o ddynoliaeth sydd si eisiau weld cymdeithas gwar, lle mae pobl yn cael eu trin yn iawn. Uh, you know, this, this fight, yes, it's a fight for the university staff, it's a fight for pensions, but it's much, much bigger than that, you know. It's a fight for justice. Yes. Yeah. It's a fight, it's a fight for, for justice in education, it's a fight for justice in the work, workplace, and it's a fight for a just society, you know. Um, I think, you know, in, in dark moments comes moments of inspiration, and I want to thank you. Uh, for uh, the way that you've conducted this struggle. It's inspiring. It shows that we can win. You've already won the moral uh, argument. Uh, now we have to win uh, the, the final battle. It's happening as the vice chancellors are pe peeling away day, day by day. You will win this, but it opens a much, much bigger conversation about what universities are there for, what society is there for, and the better world that we all want to create. university staff to our students and um, because this strike is not just about our pay packets in retirement there will be knock-on effects for our students for the higher education system as a whole now we all love our jobs they see that we, we love researching we love discovering new things and it's a privilege to teach new generations of students and we all feel that and I think that we've heard that a lot on the picket lines and in our rallies here this week on the other hand, I think our students see that universities over the past decade have become very demoralized places. Um, the huge hikes in student fees, the increasing marketization of higher education have turned universities into businesses. They have turned universities into businesses, they have turned students into consumers, and they have turned vice chancellors into CEOs. And we stand against that this week, and we stand against that in our strike. I think our students and their support for us see this as a hugely damaging thing. They see that higher education should be a public good and not a commodity. There have been big changes in the way that we all work. There have been lots of pressures from new roles, from increasing workloads. We, we, they see, I think, that modern universities run in large part on goodwill, on unpaid overtime. I don't know many lecturers, many university staff that don't work crazy hours, that don't work weekends. That is not normal. That is not healthy. And our students have been telling us that this week by standing shoulder to shoulder with us. The marketization has also led to universities entering the gig economy in a big way, with more than two-thirds of research staff on fixed-term contracts, insecure contracts, with big increases in precarious hourly paid teachers and almost half of UK universities employing researchers and teachers on zero hours contracts. We say this is not acceptable in our strike. <laughs> Along with our stagnating wages over the last decade, real terms losses of 17% since 2009, all of this has demoralized us. We are not demoralized anymore. We are buoyed up by our student support and our collective solidarity in this strike. Okay. okay, so I'm here with Andy Williams, who's one of our lecturers from the JMEX school. Um, could you just give us a brief overview of the purpose of today's rally? The purpose of today's rally is all to do with a, a massive historic raid on our pensions. Personally, I stand to go from earning about £20,000 a year in my retirement, which is all, all I've got to pay for my family when I retire, which was agreed and which was promised to us by our employers from when we started work. Um, I, I stand to, to, to go down from £20,000 a year to about £8,000 a year. Now, you can't support a family on that. You can't live on that. And I'm just one example. There are many, many thousands of others across the UK. We're all being hit by 40 to 60% decreases in our pension. 
Um, and this is just the final straw after a whole raft of changes in the higher education system over the last couple of decades, which have meant, which are all linked to the introduce, introduction and the, the hike in student fees, which have meant an increasing culture of competition within universities, turning universities into businesses rather than providers of, of public good, which is what we all think that we do with our students. We're there to provide them with opportunities to, to, to learn skills, to go into the world, but also opportunities to become kind of living, kind of citizens and to and to reach their full potential as human beings too and that part of what we do has been stifled by the changes in university so we're here to protest about the 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 the, the, the attacks on our pension but we're also here to protest more broadly against the marketization and the corporatization of higher education okay and what else have you been doing um in aid of these strikes other than obviously this rally and the strikes itself have you been on picket lines every day yep um, this is the third week of a, of a four-week escalating strike action at Cardiff University and at 63 other universities across the country. Every day, outside all the main buildings in the university, we've been having picket lines from 8 o'clock. We've been all meeting outside the main building at 11 o'clock, um, where we can all get together and hear speeches and G each other up and get our morale back up. We've been organizing teach out events where we've been inviting our colleagues and our students, even though we're not in the lecture theater, to learn, to learn in ways which are free from the, the restrictions of the modern university. And that's been one of the most lovely things that, 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 that we've done. We've organized uh, lobbies of MPs and AMs and they've, they've, they've provided us cross-party support for, for us in our struggle against these, these huge attacks on our pensions. Um, and we will continue to do so next week if the negotiations at a national level are not conclusive and if we aren't guaranteed fair and just and decent pensions in, in our retirement. And what has the feedback from the students been like? We heard you say it's been largely positive. Yes, it has. I mean, personally speaking, I've had a lot of support from my students. Now, if you'd asked me three weeks ago, um, how things would have gone, uh, I would have been afraid, okay? And I was afraid. I was afraid that the action we were taking would make our students angry. I would, uh, uh, that, that it would add to the anger and injustice they feel at having to pay 9,000 pounds a year and, the, and, and, and the, that being forced to be consumers of higher education would mean that they'd be taking that anger out on us. I am so, so grateful to our students for not reacting in that way, largely speaking. The, the UK-wide opinion, by and large, the students have been behind us. At Cardiff University, over 6,000 of our students have signed a supportive petition in favour of the lecturer's action and calling on Colin Reard and the Cardiff University Vice-Chancellor to compensate them both academically and financially and we support them in their calls for that. And I think that one of the best things to come out of this strike is that we're working together with our students, not just on this pensions issue, um, but about the broader issues of marketization in higher education. And I hope that that will continue when we win our strike. And I strongly, strongly urge Universities UK to have those conversations, to stop this injustice, to give you the benefits, the pensions that you so rightly deserve. So I'm gonna hand over back now, but I am with you, marching in spirit all the time, standing up for you, and whatever I can do, let's beat this together. Our attention to raise everybody's attention to another pension struggle which is going on. Carolyn is representing the Waspy women. Please give her a big hand. Um, since I first became an MP, one of the things that has really, really angered me is the way that 1950s women have been treated by this government. They paid into a pension scheme, they paid in, they're not asking for a benefit, they're asking for their entitlement. And they have been robbed. And you guys will be in the same position if you let this go unchallenged. 1950s women were the backbone of this country and all the thought that a collection of women who this government thought they could dismiss and put to one side would mobilise, politicise and become such a strong voice. Today on International Women's Day, we're going to be in the streets of Cardiff. We're going to be heard right across this fantastic city. We will not let anyone deny these women their right, their pension. Thank you. With the election and today continuing with this strike 
that millions of people in this country are learning to dream again. A sudden, very basic issues come to the fore. Ideas such as if somebody is working 40 hours a week, that person should not be in poverty, should not struggle to pay the bills. A 10 pound minimum wage is not a radical idea. It is a matter of basic justice. Housing is a human right. Taxing the top 5% to pay for public services for the other 95% is the right thing to do. The essential water, the precious water that we use to wash our bodies and drink and gas and electricity and railways and education should be run by us, not by profit-making corporations. And most importantly for us today, that education is not a commodity to be sold and sold on a marketplace. It is a gift from one generation to the next. Yes. And if university education is free in Germany and Iceland and Norway and Finland, why not here? Why not here? Why not here? That we, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Today is International Women's Day. And a few weeks ago, we were remembering some very courageous women who a hundred years ago fought for our democracy. I'm talking about these suffragettes. And I would ask you, everyone here, when you leave this rally today, when you go back to the strike, back to your studies, please reflect. What kind of stories would you like people in a hundred years' time to tell about our generation? Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if people said, those people, those 2018 folks, they were some very courageous folks. They went on strike, they took direct action, they marched, they protested, not only to bring down the government and win pension justice, but to change the world. <laughs> Part of the International Women's Day event in Cardiff today. Hello. I talk back to Paula, um, I think there isn't much that hasn't been said already. I mean, huge respect to all of you. I've been involved in academia for the last 20 years on and off, and I think I haven't seen anything like this for a long time, so... Keep up the pressure. For both for, for your pensions and for the fact that education isn't a commodity, it's a public right. Yes. And you need spaces where you can think and research, and this isn't something you can put money to, so keep up the pressure. It is my absolute pleasure to extend solidarity from the International Women's Strike Movement that is happening on International Women's Day today. Um, so solidarity with you all. <laughs> and yes, we're having a, a whole day of striking and celebrating in Cardiff today, and I think this is absolutely amazing.